And now I can get rid of these random small bowls and replace it with a stack of my homemade ice cream bowls. I'm going to replace these. Hi everyone and welcome back to Lila's Homemade. I picked up some of my glazed ware from the studio. I don't have my own kiln yet. So what I do is I make these at home. I trim it and then I leave it to bone dry. I'll take it to the studio for the first bisque firing. And then I take it home, I sand it, glaze it and take it back. So it is a bit tricky to transport bisque ware that has been glazed to the studio. But I've learned a few tips and tricks along the way and sometimes they're not perfect, but I'm okay with that. So here are some of the things that I picked up uh, a few days ago. These are uh, little cups. Uh, I could use it for coffee, for example, for a latte or maybe a long black. That was glazed inside with floating green as long as well as the uh, top rim there, about half of it. And then the bottom bit dipped in tenmoku. And then I made these little ramekins that I intend to use for creme brulee. Uh, so I'll make another video uh, later of how to make creme brulee with using these little cute little ramekins and so that's why I chose the colors that kind of resonate to Crambule, which is haystack and then tenmoku. And then I made a stack of these little ice cream bowls. These were all glazed in floating green, dipped the whole thing in floating green and then I brushed a line of tenmoku inside just as, as uh, kind of like an accent. I really love how they turned out. Now that they've been glazed, one final thing that I need to do is actually to sand the bottom of it so that it doesn't scratch the tabletop or it doesn't scratch the next one down when it's stacked up like that and it just gives a nice finish to the bottom. At the moment it's not too bad because I've already sanded it before I glazed it but it's always good to just make sure that it's nice and smooth. So for example with a cup like this I don't want it to scratch the table because I have a wooden surface and so I'm using waterproof sandpaper, just the normal one. This is a grit 220, so it's quite smooth. I think the professionals use something called diamond core sandpaper or diamond core sanding blocks. But at the moment, I find that they're quite expensive. When I looked it online, it was about $90 for one little pad. And I'm, I'm sure they last for a long time. But at the moment, I'm, I'm preferring to spend my money on trying different glazes and, um, and probably getting a kiln. So I find that the waterproof sandpaper does well because it doesn't kind of flake off. Whereas if you don't buy waterproof sandpaper, then it does tend to break up. And these were only two New Zealand dollars a sheet. So even if it didn't last for a very long time, I feel like I'm still good. So let me show you what I do. So here I have my sandpaper below it. I just put a little uh, block of they call it dry wet, drywall in the States, I believe, but uh, it's in New Zealand, it's called a jibboard, a piece of jibboard, which I also use uh, sometimes to wedge on, but a bigger version of this. So I just put the sandpaper there on top. I'll take one of these things here and I can feel like uh, that bit there is a bit is smooth, but then there are bits that are just, just feel slightly gritty. And so what I do is I have just a little bowl of water because... Um, clay in its dry form can you know the clay dust can be very bad for you actually it is very bad for you so if if you dip it in water uh i go there and i just do that in my nice little circle and give it a feel and dip it in the water again to take off any of the dry bits and give it another feel I'm going to also just sand a bit on the outside by kind of like wobbling it like that. Yes, I think I'm happy with that. And I, now if I run my finger around it, I don't feel in, uh, like it's not getting caught on anything, or so to speak. So just give it a good rinse, put it on a dark, dry tea towel there to dry. Same thing, give it a nice feel. And yes, there is a bit of grittiness there. And I'll just go through all of this and see you soon. Once it's been bisque fired and then glaze fired, um, it is actually quite a sturdy piece of work. Sometimes I still remember that 
holding it quite gently because I feel like I might damage it from the soft clay thing. And that's about it. I can leave this sandpaper to dry out a bit and I can use it for another piece. I can feel here that that bit there is, start, is quite smooth now because I've used primarily that area, but that bit there is still okay. Um, I use also the same sandpaper to sand down uh, bisqueware too uh, before it gets glazed. Thank you very much for watching and I can now stack these plates on my shelf. So now I can get rid of these random small bowls and replace it with a stack of my homemade ice cream bowls. I'm going to replace these small tumblers, water cups with my homemade ones. As you can see, they don't really you know, they're not really the same size or shape, but uh, I don't really mind. I mean, I love the look of that. I've been told that one test of whether it's good enough to use for daily wear is to pour boiling water in it. And if it breaks, then it means it wasn't good for daily wear. But that didn't break. Um, I also usually put hot water in the cup that I'm using to make coffee just to warm it up so that the coffee doesn't get cold quickly. Not the perfect latte art, but homemade coffee in a homemade cup. What could be better than that? <laughs>